You're watching Focus Montreal. Welcome back to Focus Montreal. We move on now to a problem that could be lurking in computers all over the world, including yours. It's been dubbed Heartbleed, and it can access your computer without leaving any trace, potentially exposing your sensitive information, everything from banking to email, and doing it on encrypted websites you thought were safe. It's so serious, the Canada Revenue Agency shut down its website this week. In a minute, we'll find out how you can protect yourself. But first, here's Global's Mike Drolet to explain exactly what Heartbleed is. If this were the door to our online lives, we've left it unlocked for the past two years, allowing a bug called Heartbleed to infiltrate. This is probably the largest security vulnerability we've ever seen, uh, at least in recent history. Two thirds of all web servers around the world are potentially affected by this. There's no underestimating it. It's big. So big that what former hacker turned security consultant Jeremiah Brott found when trying it out was a world without security. In our test, we've been able to get private key passwords, documents, usernames, passwords, whatever's there leaking currently open is probably what's going to leak back to you. It's been a while since there was a computer security bug we all had to worry about. Heartbleed is certainly that, since it operates on OpenSSL, the most commonly used encryption software in the world. Regular encryption works so that data being sent looks like nonsense. Computers occasionally need to check to see if the computer at the other end of a secure connection is still there. So it sends what's known as a heartbeat. Now here's where the flaw exists. Hackers can send a fake heartbeat that tricks your computer into sending data stored in its memory. And that's the heartbleed bug. The only problem today is that CRA's website is down because of which you won't be able to get your refund now. News of Heartbleed comes as many Canadians are uploading their sensitive tax information. The Canadian Revenue Agency is so concerned with the breach, it shut down its site today as a precaution at the busiest time of the year. And it may not be up again until the weekend. We know there's a systems vulnerability. Uh, we have identified that, so we shut down those systems right away as a precautionary measure only. We're investigating, we're working on it. Remarkably, it's remained undetected for two years, and there's really no way of knowing who or how many people have had their information compromised. That's because a good hacker will cover his tracks. But with Heartbleed, there's no tracks to cover. There is no legitimate way to trace this one back or to tell that it actually occurred. And even as a hacker, you're afraid of this? Yes, yes. It's pretty big. So what can you do about it? Experts say change all your passwords. That's the quick fix. That's the good news. But it's also alerted hackers who might try and exploit weakness in the net before the requisite fixes are in place. Mike Drolet, Global News, Toronto. Well, joining me now to tell us more about the virus, the Chief Technology Officer with Digital Locksmiths in Montreal, Terry Cutler. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. I know nothing about computers, and maybe I represent some people out there. How scared or worried should I be about this virus? So it's a big problem. I think last time we saw something as big as this would be like the Y2K issue. So let me try and break this problem down in layman's terms. So right. imagine I'm the bank. Right. Or I'm the CRA. You're a visitor, and you come and talk to me. I'm going to say, okay, Jamie, during this session, I'm going to give you this key, which will encrypt. So John Smith could be also talking to me, and he's going to get a separate key, right. which will get scrambled. So no one can intercept each other. So, so during that session, I got like my janitorial keychain, right? So you got this key, he's got that key, the other guy's got that key. But now the hacker can get access to my entire keychain. I can intercept everybody's information. So whenever, um, let's, say, let's say you're typing in your password or you're submitting tax files, a hacker could say, okay, I'm going to talk back to the server, but send me whatever you have in memory. It could be your credit card data, it could be your passwords, it could be whatever you want. So we'll come down to them. It sounds uh, pretty worrisome because, of course, you don't want people to have that information. Can you protect yourself from this? I'm hearing everywhere change all your passwords. Right. So as, as a consumer, there's not too, too much you can do because it's, it's untraceable. It's, right. it's, uh, it's invisible to the user. All they see is a lock. And they think, oh, okay, well, this, is, this must be secure, right? But what's happening is the hacker can still see everything behind the scenes. So yes, you, 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 have, you definitely have to change your password. Uh, but the problem is, if they haven't fixed the problem and you go and change your password, the hackers can still access your newest password. Right. So it's like you have to change it again once they fix the problem. And I'm hearing that this has been out there for two years, right. and they haven't stopped it yet. So if I'm dealing with my bank today to pay some bills, and I put in my password and they haven't fixed it, they get that password? They, they, can, get in, they can get intercepted, yeah. 
So what do I do? The, the, the only thing you can do is, there's a couple of things. One is obviously monitor your, your credit card information, mm -hmm. right? See if there's any fraudulent charges. The other one is to change your password. And I always get asked the question, how do I pick a good password, right? So obviously it's a combination of uppercase, lowercase symbols. So people are saying, how do you create a password like that? The only suggestion I can give is to think of it as a passphrase. Think of a lyrics to a song that you love and make that your password. And instead of having an O, put a zero, or have, instead of the A, put an at symbol. Okay. So you can mix it up. Try to keep it between 16 and 20 characters. 16 to 20 yeah. characters. So that's lyrics to a song make sense, so you'd be able to remember that. That's right. right. But as you said, even if I change my password on my bank account or on whatever kind of shopping that I'm doing, eBay or whatever, yeah. they can still get that. So do I have to change my password every day? Is that... Well, so, uh, you know, believe it or not, the average person has between 20 and 50 passwords. This, this ranges everything from online passwords to ATM pins and house codes and all this kind of stuff. So to remember all this is, is really hard. People write this stuff down, put it under their keyboard. Mm. So if you can make a good password that's between 16 and 20 characters, something that's really hard to break, then you should be, you should be able to bring that down to five passwords if you want. And then, but what if they get them? All right, so there's another solution you can have. <laughs> okay. One of them is called two-step verification. And this is good. I hope this can be mandatory on everything. What happens is you're going to have your password. You're going to type it into, let's say, Facebook or Yahoo, whatever you want. And what's going to happen is a text message will come to your phone with a verification code that you have to type in also. So now, so now even if they had access to your password, they don't have access to your phone. Right. So you got to type in that code. So the combination of two of them means, oh, this must be you. Oh, I've been getting that one lately, actually. Yeah. So that's sort of what they're doing to, 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 to counter this. That's right. So, okay, we've seen the Canada Revenue Agency shut down during tax season. This yeah. indicates to us lay people that it's pretty serious. Yeah. Who do you expect will shut down as well as the CRA? Okay, so, so the way it works is that two-thirds of the Internet is using, let's say, the same door lock. Mm -hmm. Okay? The rest of the internet wouldn't be. So things like the uh, FBI and all those guys have a different system. So this, this, uh, the one that affects the two thirds of the internet is they all have the same master lock, we'll say. Right. And it was never verified because somebody, maybe a programmer typed in the, just programmed it wrong and this flaw was dragged down because nobody's testing for it. Right. So, so two thirds of, of companies on the internet are susceptible right, to this? Right, of, of the web servers, yeah. Of the web servers. Yeah. So banks could shut could down? Banks, it could be everything, yeah. And do you expect that to roll out over the days and weeks ahead where yeah, all of I, a sudden banks say we're closing down because we've got to solve this problem? It could happen, but I think it's going to be a race against time because the update is fresh and, and it's the race to update this across thousands and hundreds of thousands of systems. Mm. So if you're a large company, you can't just say, okay, I'm just going to update this overnight. Because sometimes when you apply these updates, it breaks other things on the computers. So it's got to be properly tested before it just gets thrown into the, into the system. Can you come over to my house and fix my <laughs> computer for me? That's honestly, I think that's what a lot of people feel when these stories yeah. break. You don't even know. You get these updates sent to you. Are you supposed to do those updates? Is the, that The Windows safe? update is extremely important to do. You have to do that because yes. they're trying to solve the problem, yes. right? Yeah, because now the big problem is that whenever you're surfing on the web, you expect to see that lock. But now, even if you have that lock, you're, you're, you're unsafe. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the trust of online banking and stuff, is, I think, is going to diminish. So just go to your teller. Yeah. So there's, and you can also, if ever you want to do business with a bank, you can always call up their customer service and find out if they've applied this update yet. Okay. Yeah. Terry, it's, uh, it's boggling to the <laughs> mind for people, but this is your specialty, and you can help people, right? That's what your That's company it. So does. I, right? My interesting job is uh, I get paid to legally break into systems, help them find all the holes before the bad guys do. But unless we test for this type of software, cust customers are, are not going to pay for to test other people's software. Right. So. Because it's not in my computer, it's in the computers of That's the people right. I'm dealing with. That's right. So we have to sort of check with our bank, with uh, eBay, with all the companies we deal with to make sure they've applied the That's software. Right. Yeah. That's right. And keep current. Check, just keep checking your credit and your credit score and your credit rating. Check for fraud charges. All right, Terry. Thank you. It's not that reassuring. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> We're you getting there. We're getting there. It. Yes. Thank you very much, thank Terry you. Cutler. If you want more information on how to protect yourself, you can always reach Terry and his team directly through their website at digitallocksmiths.com. Up next on.